Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we have a review of chapter 951, Rampage. And this week we have a landmark chapter in One Piece history and we are going to start right at the end because I don't see any way of avoiding this first, but Big Mom and Kaido have not only finally met up, but they have engaged in combat, resulting in the infamous sky splitting effect that we saw with Shanks and Whitebeard during their brief skirmish. And speaking of, that event took place way, 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 way back in 2006, which makes me feel incredibly old because I was reading it weekly at the time, but I love just how much the Kaido versus Big Mom clash mirrors it. And it goes right down to the poses actually, because Kaido's form is very reminiscent of Whitebeard's forward lunge, and Big Mom mirrors about as much as Shanks as she can, given that she has an extra arm to deal with. But the wide panel near the end of the sky splitting above Onigashima really is the stuff of dreams. This is a clash that definitely I, and I feel like very much of the fan base have been visualizing occurring for quite some time now, and it does not disappoint at all. However, from here, I do wonder exactly how this is going to play out. And of course, in the original Yonko clash, that was all we saw from them. And then Shanks and Whitebeard were just doing their own thing in the future after some form of resolution. I guess the main thing to keep in mind here though, is that Shanks and Whitebeard are definitely the more level-headed type of leaders, whilst Big Mom and Kaido are driven almost purely by emotion. So if they are actually intent on killing each other, then I don't see any real reason for them to stop other than some form of weird interruption like Big Mom discovering that her crew was in trouble or something like that. But even then, I, I'm not so sure. And look, truth be told, I absolutely do not want this conflict to be over with just this strike. This is an extraordinarily rare opportunity to watch two of the four emperors of equally godlike power go at it. And if anything, an extended battle might go towards serving the plot as well. For example, with such a huge event taking place, Kaido and the rest of the beast pirates would be greatly distracted thus allowing Luffy and his allies to cause further chaos on Wano leading up to the Fire Festival. And speaking of just moving away from the Emperors for a brief bit, while we're on this topic, a bit more information was revealed about said festival this week, being that it is a time to remember and mourn the dead. So as a result, I'm feeling that festival time is when we might be receiving the inevitable Odin and Lady Toki flashback. You know, something along the lines of Kinemon and Momonosuke sets off a sky boat in their honor, and then we step back into flashback land before embarking on the big chunk of action for Wano. That or the Fire Festival may even get used for a Big Mom and Kaido flashback because their past was hinted at once again during this chapter with some miscellaneous crew just throwing in the old line of, hey, did you know that Big Mom and Kaido used to be part of the same crew? So that feels a bit to me like Oda saying, no, 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 let's remember this because it's going to be relevant very soon. And I am pretty hyped for that idea because I feel like it would be such a good way to really wrap up this gigantic Yonko saga. I mean, ever since we stepped foot into the new world, we've had a bit of a back and forth going between events building up to Big Mom and events building up to Kaido, very much entwining their stories, which has culminated in both of them being present for what will quite possibly be one of the greatest arcs in the entire series. What we're seeing right now is the result of the work put into the entire post time skip era so far. And I do think that Wano will see the fall of these two powerhouses and will go on to reshape the world even more radically than after the passing of Whitebeard. But as part of that, their stories do need to be completed. And I have no doubt that Oda has plans for some kind of incredibly tragic individual backstory for Kaido, just as he did with Big Mom on Whole Cake Island. But then I'm also hoping that that flashback expands into the whole history of their former crew so that we can really bring their era to a close and move on with the next generation and the proper race to become the Pirate King. Before we got to the whole battle thing though, there was another particularly interesting bit of information just plonked in this week. Although before even that, I must say that it was so, so very cool to see all three of the calamities gathered together, collectively shitting themselves. And you know, it's a really dangerous thing where you see a man of Jack's caliber just looking utterly powerless in response to a situation laid before him. But the calamity I want to focus on in particular is King, because it would appear that according to Big Mom, he is a brand new race for the One Piece world. And well, new to us, old to the world, I guess. Theoretically extinct, in fact. Fact. And so after years and years and years, it looks to be finally confirmed that we do, or at least we did have some sort of bird people in existence in One Piece. Sort of like the flying equivalent to Fishman, I guess. And this is something that has been speculated about to death using evidence of characters like Monet, Lafitte, and even Big News Morgans. Although actually, just a bit of a side note here, in the latest edition of the One Piece Vivia card data book, there is a shockingly casual confirmation that Morgans is a devil fruit user, and he has eaten the Tori Tori no Mi model albatross. And I feel like that's pretty insanely important information to be buried 
buried in a data book, but what can you do? So while that does put an end to all the theories that put Morgans as some sort of bird overlord, the Harpy-esque race is still somewhat confirmed here with King. Although something I do feel like I need to put a halt to right now is that in one of the fan translations, apparently Big Mom referred to King as her son during the whole exchange where she asked him to join her crew. And this is complete BS. I have no idea what the translator was thinking or even if they were thinking, but if any of you read that one, immediately disregard that idea. It is not present in any other translation, especially the official one. But the really fascinating part about this exchange was Big Mom stating that her kingdom was still missing representatives of three races. One of which is obviously whatever King happens to be, which was thought to be lost to the world. And another one is obviously the Giants, which in classic Oda style leaves us with one big old question mark over what the third could be. And as far as I can remember, there weren't any basic ones missing on Whole Cake Island. I mean, even the minks and the dwarves were represented. So if I had to guess, I'd say it was going to be another weird and rare one, like the Three-Eyed Tribe that we probably haven't encountered or defined yet. And that's not the only mysterious thing lingering as a result of this chapter though, because the whole Law and Hawkins business continues to feel, you know, just, just a little bit off. Like as much as I go back and forth on this a lot, I have a hard time believing that Hawkins is operating entirely in the interest of the Beast Pirates. Although admittedly, a lot of this stems from Law's words about not telling Luffy that he's been captured. And yeah, I guess the immediate reasoning for as to why would be that Luffy would more than likely mount a rescue operation that would put the entire plan to bring down Kaido in jeopardy. But I feel like there has to be a little bit more to it than that. Like Law being captured here is going to serve as incredibly strategically important, whether he's made an alliance with Hawkins, Drake, or neither of them, and just has his own ideas about going forward. But back to Hawkins, and after seeing how confidently he acted binding the lives of Law's crew, it does feel like a very sudden 180 shift to, you know, Law being willing to slaughter them to get through to him. And that's partially because first of all, as an audience, we know that Law isn't that kind of character. So unless he is a phenomenal actor and managed to convince Hawkins otherwise, there's just something a bit odd happening here. The other thing I could think of is that Hawkins performed a tarot reading and saw a truly shocking future. Either one that had his death being almost certain should he not comply with Law, or one that spoke to greater events to play out on Wano. I do really like his line though, where he said, the threats of a man who includes no hope in his future plans are just as dangerous as they seem. Because it very much speaks to Law's lineage and the will of D in general. I think you could apply the same sentences to Luffy and probably Roger as well. They're the kind of people that don't generally take the future into account when they act, which to someone who invests so much in that knowledge as Hawkins, I guess would be quite terrifying. Whatever the case, the plot thickens, and I'm very, very keen to see how this all plays out. This chapter also had quite a few great moments of comedy, primarily to do with the wanted sketches. And first of all, Beppo's is my absolute favorite, no doubt. His Japanese incarnation is fantastic. And I feel like it might be unfortunately easy to miss with all the focused attention on some of the Straw Hats and Shinobu. However, the best thing to come out of these sketches is the return of Usopp and Robin's infamous faces as they don them to sneak past some guards with Brooke behind them acting as a ghost. And I really cannot love this enough. I said this the first time that Robin made this face, but I am so glad she's finding herself a solid comic footing with the crew and that Oda isn't afraid to do weird and quirky things with her. And it also highlights just how much I enjoy the Robin Usopp combination, which we got a taste of in action during the Dress Rosa arc, but I really do think that they're quite an interesting match. And to me, part of that is because there's no member of the monster trio or a natural leader involved like Nami. So when Usopp and Robin get thrown together, they just kind of have to improvise their way around as best they can, coming up with creative and fun solutions like what we see in this chapter. And finally, there's no cover story this week, but there was a pretty fun color spread featuring the seven characters that One Piece Stampede is hyping up ever, ever so much. It is a fantastic spread though, with Luffy angrily taking food from Buggy and Boa imitating him trying to scold Smoker. With Rob Lucci looking the most awkward I have ever seen him in the background there, and plus Hattori is in on the chaos as well. And then in the foreground, there's a brilliant drawing of Law looking like he is about to lose his shit after having a burger dumped on his head here by Buggy. And let's just remember that Law hates bread, so this is a grand insult, no doubt. And then of course, there's just Sabo sitting there in the middle trying to enjoy some lovely ramen amongst this emerging food fight. Brilliant color spread, and it's already one of my desktop backgrounds. But that pretty much does it for chapter 951. Sadly, it is my great disappointment to say that next week will be a break, which is both incredibly difficult after the amazingness we've just seen, but at the same time, I think that this chapter gives us a lot to take in over the next two weeks, so it's honestly possibly one of the best possible chapters to go into a break with. But if you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the chapter. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.
So this right here is me filling 20 seconds of time to reach the 10 minute mark so that YouTube can grant me a coveted second ad for this video. Is there a problem with YouTube? Absolutely. Can I do anything about it? Not really. But what I can give you is some of this sweet, sweet Southbird. And come on, you just try and tell me that this magnificent creature is not worth your time. This has been the Grand Line Review and I'll try harder next time.